have a look out here. This is where he's escaping from. <laughs> he scales that? Yeah. How? Chris has received a plea for help from the baffled Stefan. Somehow scaled up the drain pipe. His dog Splodge is constantly escaping. Uh, one of my neighbours gave me a call at work and said, Stefan, are you at home? I said, no, I'm at work. Why? And he goes, your dog is on my roof. On your roof? My first impression of Splodge is he's tiny. How does he get up on roofs? Is this for real? The only theory we have, hmm. um, and it sounds crazy, is that he uses the vine. Well, what's this here? Looks to me like that's where Splodge has actually scratched at the bark. Stefan's never been able to catch his dog in the act, but Splodge is quite happy to show off his acrobatic climbing abilities in the garden shed. Right now, there's a fair bit on Splodge's rap sheet. He scratches, he chews, he poos in the house. That was it. One day was just once too much. As long as there's someone home, he is the most extremely well-behaved, adorable dog you can imagine. Aside from the mystery of how he gets out, I've got serious concerns about his safety. And he could live up to his name. Splodge could go splodge. The little Houdini has already had a near-death experience. He ran out onto the road and he got hit by a car. And, uh, you know, he broke his leg and that was very traumatic for him, for us, um, for everyone. I think it's time for some secret splodge surveillance. This behaviour has to stop. Hello, hi. Andrew and his daughter, Emily, have just rushed to the Bondi Referral Hospital, Sash. I might pop her on the floor, actually, then I can see if she can stand. Their much-loved four-year-old Labrador, Chino, is suddenly experiencing uncontrollable seizures. Hey, you are, Chino. Chino's been swimming at the beach about two hours ago, and then she suddenly started tremoring in her face and all over her body. It's most likely something she's eaten. She's playful, very energetic and, and awesome with the family, but um, yeah, not well today. She's a beautiful dog. Yeah. You like Gina? Mm -hmm. She's been exposed to some sort of toxin. I don't know what it is, and I really need to try and work out what's going on here. Hold down. Come on. That's OK. As Chino's family waits for news, the poison attacks her system again. It's OK. OK, this is the plan. I'm going to put multiple cameras around the backyard. They're going to capture his every move. If he leaves the backyard, we're going to know about it. Chris is trying to find out how Splodge is managing to escape from home. We'll see just how smart you are. I just cannot wait to find out how he's doing this. I just can't see how it's possible. I think you're in a bit of trouble, Splodge. Stay. Where'd go? All right. Never thought I'd say this, Splodge. Don't behave. Look after yourself. So we'll sneak around the front, right. and we'll watch the monitors from in there, OK? Oh, it's on. It's on. You're kidding. So he's holding himself up with the vine, like, almost as a, as a safety strap. Oh my God! No way. He's incredible. <laughs> Chris and Stefan are finally watching just how the amazing splodge manages to scale a brick wall. He's incredible. Just go straight up the bricks. I didn't think he'd do it. And then he's closed the bricks vertically. And then does a big chin up. <laughs> Onto the top. It. I wouldn't have believed it. It's like it was the easiest thing in the world. Strangely, the escape artist isn't making an immediate exit. He stays perched on the brick wall for more than five minutes. 
You'd think after all that effort, he'd scurry off into the sunset, but he just, he just hangs out. Yeah, it's like he's happy there. Yeah. So who lives there? Uh, Stephanie and James, the immediate neighbours. Uh, and then that's further... <laughs> I reckon I know who this might be. <laughs> yeah. Steffi. Yeah, hi. Are you at work or at home? No, I'm, I'm actually at home. Oh, OK, good. Well, he's on the roof. So do you want me to bring him home or what do you want me to do? Is it too much trouble to bring him home? Can you get him down? Yeah, yeah, I can get him down. <laughs> you little rascal. Oh, we were just watching you, Splodge. He, he will visit anybody. It's, it, the, the thing is, at first you think he likes you, and then you realise it's got nothing to do with that. It's just that you're a, another living, breathing creature. So, you'll do. So, I th you know, I think, I think he's really cool, actually. Mate, I reckon we've got to make this time the last time. Ah, you hear that? Last time. That would be fantastic, Chris. I tell you, if you can do that, that would actually set my mind at ease a lot. Now it's a waiting game for Stefan and Splodge to find out just what solution Chris will come up with. Come on, puppy. In we go. <laughs> At Sash, Chino's tremors are getting worse. The toxin is just raging through her system. We really need to stabilise her before she actually gets any worse. I'm going to make you feel a little bit sick now. I've just given Chino an injection of a drug called apomorphine, which is a drug that makes them vomit quite quickly. And I'm hoping that she's going to bring up something that's in her stomach that can give us some clue as to what's going on. So we just have to now wait for her to vomit. Okay, so there are some seeds. Lisa needs to quickly identify these seeds before Chino's condition becomes critical. I am concerned that she's eaten a plant called yesterday, today and tomorrow. This plant, which is also known as Brunfelsia, is highly toxic to dogs. I am concerned that those might be the seeds. Hi, Andrew, it's Lisa calling. What I want to know is, is there a plant in the area where she has been this morning? It's got purple and white little flowers all over it. Oh, OK. Andrew has confirmed that Brunfelsia is growing in his garden. Chino now needs treatment urgently. It is extremely toxic plant. It affects the brain and she's absolutely not out of the danger zone yet. Let's come straight through in here. Later that night, Chris is called to the clinic for an emergency. Hey, matey. Eight-week-old Samson is lapsing in and out of consciousness and is just hanging on. Really scary, and his eyes sort of rolled a little bit. And, okay. And when you, we, sh we shook him, he just definitely was wasn't normal. Definitely wasn't yeah. like just normal. Yeah. Thing. Has he been scratching a lot with the, yeah, the flu? Yeah. yeah. Has he been wormed? Did no. Well, the guy when I spoke to him, he said he advertised saying eight weeks, and we went to see him, and he was just standing at the front of his house with his cage, and we were all like, okay, this is a bit dodgy. Yeah. And then he said, oh, by the way, he's only seven weeks. And we were just like, I just want to get this kid home. Yeah. I was so just, just, it was not right. But he hasn't, I don't think he's come from a good place. Yeah. The girls have told me that Samson hasn't been wormed or vaccinated. Now, that mightn't seem like a big deal, but just look at Samson right now. Because those shots weren't given at all, he's now fighting for his life. He's running a fever as well. Yeah, so it, it is actually high. What I would like to do, I want to take him out the back and actually get a little blood sample from him. My suspicion is that he's anemic. Help Samson. If they hadn't brought Samson in when they did, then I've got no doubt he would have been dead by tomorrow morning. Even now, I'm not even sure we can save him.
because of the state he's in, he's got very low blood pressure, so the veins pretty much disappear as you put the needle near them. Chris is taking a blood sample from Samson to find out what's making the kitten so dangerously ill. Now, about a mil is, is what I'm after here. And we've got that there. I'm sorry, Samson. I'm sorry about that, buddy. So these little tubes store the blood and then we spin them down and it separates the blood cells from the liquid part of the blood. And it gives us a very good idea about whether he's anemic or not. Yeah, it's not good. For a kitten, the normal level is between 30 and 45. Samson, though, comes in at 21. So he, he's significantly anemic. It's pretty shocking to think that in this day and age, people can sell a kitten that's young, that hasn't been vaccinated, that hasn't been wormed, and is underweight. I mean, it's grossly irresponsible, and unfortunately, Samson's paying the price for it right now. Let's see. The tests confirm Samson is infested with worms and, much worse, lethal blood parasites. The parasites are killing off his red blood cells and causing the kitten's life-threatening anemia. Untreated, they'll kill him. We feel really bad because we feel like we've done the wrong thing by him. I'm really worried that he's not going to pull through. I don't know how good she'll be. With the poisonous plant identified, Lisa's giving Chino an enema to eliminate the toxin from her system. Looks a girl. As long as the seeds are inside her digestive tract, they're still toxic. So it doesn't matter if they're in the stomach or in the, they're in the colon. We need to get them out. All right, darling. I know, I know. That's a girl, that's a girl. Okay. You're right, Steph. Good girl. Oh, there are a lot of seeds here. Oh, what a good girl. I have never seen that many seeds come out of an enema. I mean, they were just shooting across the room and all over me. Colonic irrigation. I have some colonics. People pay a lot of money for this, but um, Tino's getting it as part of her package. <sighs> oh, look, there's some bigger seeds. Oh, there. wonderful. Good girl, you'll feel better, darling. I know you can't understand that. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> we have a spectator here. OK. So we've run a few tests and, and got some results. <laughs> his issues aren't small. I guess that's, that's the first thing. He's quite severely anemic. So his red blood cell count is at 21 when it should be between 30 and 45, so it is, it, it is quite low. Tiny Samson is fighting for his life after being ravaged by potentially fatal blood parasites. I'm a bit shocked, to be honest. I know, I, I, I had, we just thought he was a little bit sick. I didn't realise it was so intense and, like, I'm so glad we brought him in. Yeah. I've only had him for a week and we're already madly in love with him. He's, you know, he's a part of our family and I couldn't imagine life without him. None of us could. Yeah. Oh, I think he knows. <laughs> the most important thing to do for Samson right now is to replace what those worms, what those fleas, what those parasites are taking away, which are his nutrients. So we're going to give him some fluids, actually under his skin rather than intravenously. It's a good amount, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to treat him for his fleas. But we're going to use a spray that's going to kill the fleas straight away. You like that? You don't mind this bit, do you? This is a high energy nutrient supplement. It also has some iron in there as well. Do a little look at that. Hmm? Oh, you're coming around to it, aren't you? Oh, you like that. <laughs> you can have the finger as well. With a little help from the Nutrigel, Samson swallows the tablets that will eradicate the worms and blood parasites. It's, it's the chunky stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Tastes a bit different to the last one you had, isn't it? Got him a beauty. Now that I've treated Samson, I've essentially done everything I can. 
he now needs to rest, he needs to build up those energy reserves so that he has a chance to see it right through to tomorrow. See you in the morning, Kat. Okay, good girl, good girl, good girl. Chino has just endured an enema to try to get rid of the poison in her system after eating a toxic plant. All right. I don't know how much she's going to like this. Now the Labrador is being force-fed one last treatment. Oh, that's yucky. The charcoal binds to any toxin that is still in her gut, so it's going to prevent anything that's floating around there from being absorbed. Oh, now it's just a matter of time and we just have to let her body eliminate the toxin. No, no, it's not nice, darling. We're going to head down to Bondi Surf Club here and grab our solution to all of Splodger's problems. Chris has come up with a left field solution to stop Splodge, the incredible escape artist. The tiny dog has already been run over once, and his owners are worried next time Splodge won't be so lucky. What's this all about? I'll explain it all later. Is it in here? It's in here. I'll give you a hand. All right. Heavy, isn't it? Yeah. I'd be pretty confident this has never, ever been used in veterinary science before. The solution comes in two parts. First of all, safety is our priority, so we're going to barricade his escape route. Secondly, it's my favourite. Special dogs get special things. And this <laughs> is the solution to your problem. You're joking, aren't you? See, in the animal world, being high up implies dominance. That's why chihuahuas love being in those handbags. There's a saying in the dog world that a happy dog is a dog with a view. If you can imagine being splodge down here, you've got high walls around you, a slice of sky up the top. Every single time a plane flew over, he howled at the sky. In his mind, those people, those machines could be conspiring against him. So he wants to know what's going on. He doesn't have separation anxiety, he's got scenery anxiety. He's frustrated because he can't see the world, so he goes out into the world to discover it for himself. This will work. Come on. Or it should. Come. There you go. <laughs> Looks <laughs> <laughs> pretty comfortable up there. <laughs> Is that a smile, Spud? It's amazing. Oh, man. This is nothing like what I expected. I expected something that was, you know, containing, barricades, stopping him getting out, closing him in. This is, uh, this is liberating him. Thank you very much, Chris. My That's pleasure. Awesome. No worries at all. It's home time. It's there. 24 hours after surviving a terrible scare, the poison is finally out of Chino's system. Believe it or not, she's usually a bit more energetic even than that. She had thousands of these seeds. Before Chino goes home, Lisa wants to be certain Andrew knows the danger plant to look out for. Thanks, Lisa. No worries. Thanks very much. You want to say thank bye you? Bye-bye. To Lisa? It's a very happy ending for Chino and Andrew's over the moon, but it's, there's a lesson there. People need to know that if they've got a dog and they've got Brunfelsia growing, they need to rip it out. Thanks. You can have all the expensive blood tests and ultrasounds and x-rays you like, but ultimately this is the best test of all. It's been a slow rehabilitation. But finally, Samson's red blood cell count is back up, and so is his energy. We spent all yesterday doing up the house, put out all these flea bombs and everything else is spotless, ready for him. And we've actually figured out he's spent nearly as much time with the vets than he has with us. So we're just hoping that he remembers that we love him. <laughs> oh. I don't know, have you met my cat? <laughs> this is Samson. Oh. He's, um, oh. what, you, do you know them, Samson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
Come on, you take it back. We can't thank Chris enough. Like, I'm, I'm actually completely in awe of what he's done. Okay, time to get the rest of your lives together. Thank you so much. It's okay. <laughs> no worries. Are you getting a little bit emotional? Of course not. I'm, I'm hard, a hardy professional. <laughs> to bring a little kitten back from where he was is just amazing. See you, little buddy. Take care, all right? So whatever he's done to him, well, we, we do. We, we thank him so much. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.